educative video of microsurgical management of skull base glomuscular tumor. This 46 years lady presented with impaired hearing left ear, hoarseness of voice, difficulty in swallowing and swaying while walking. Examination showed complete loss of hearing left ear, left vocal cord palsy, left element facial, left hypoglossal palsy and ataxic gait and there is a tumor coming into the external ear as is shown in the clinical photographs. She was investigated with contrast MRI scan brain, MR angiography and MR venography which showed a destructive lesion in the left petrous temporal bone and going up to the inner and mid ear pressing on the pontom medullary junction with the tumor brilliantly enhancing as is shown in the picture and it was descending down along with the internal jugular vein into the upper part of the neck. These are the images of cervical angiography which shows a very nice tumor blush, tumor being supplied from all the branches of external carotid artery. This is a venogram shows complete absence of transverse sinus and sigmoid sinus and transverse sigmoid junction and non-visualization of jugular fossa. She underwent two stage surgeries. First stage she underwent ligation of the external carotid artery in the neck to reduce the blood supply and reduce the vascularity of the tumor so as to help us in excising the tumor better as is shown in the in the pictures now you can see the the steps of ligation of external carotid artery we expose the common carotid artery and follow the bifurcation high up in this lady the i say bifurcation was very high up into the neck just below the skull base which you had to follow and identify the external carotid and ligated it to reduce the blood supply. Next day, we did an MR angio again, and which shows complete absence of tumor blush, and 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 tumor is completely devascularized. On fifth day, she underwent subtemporal, basal temporal, retromastoid, and cervical scalp incision, flap, and retromastoid suboccipital craniotomy removal of the foramen magnum and drilling of the temporal bone and transposition of the facial nerve at the same time all and exposure of jugular fossa sigmoid sinus transfer sinus and complete excision of the mastoid and both by me by us and ENT colleagues tumor was excised completely. As a first stage, we operated through this approach. Now you see the dura mater is opened and cerebellum was bulging and tense. So to release the pressure, we usually we open the, in such cases, we open the cisterna magna and it is very helpful, let out the CSF so that cerebellum becomes lax and you have enough space for surgical excision. The cerebellum is held gently here till we get an access to the tumor not to retract too much. The most important issue here is coagulation of the surface of the tumor. In spite of external carotid ligation, you can see the tumor is still very vascular and bleeding. So with patients and high illumination and magnification, coagulate the capsule of the tumor and the tumor which comes out of jugular foramen inside the intracranial cavity needs to be coagulated because it gets blood supply from that. And always try to maintain the arachnoidal plane on the tumor and when we go medially and towards the brainstem, always try to maintain the arachnoidal plane. Once we are sure that complete devascularization or significant reduction of the capsular vascularity has been taken care of, coagulated, then tumor capsule is opened and internal decompression is started. Now you see there, the first we try to 
devascularize it from the jugular foramen or jugular fossa where it enters into intracranial cavity as much as possible with a sharp dissection the the tumor origin is is excised or cut and separated now once that is done internal debulking of the tumor is done first starting with the cusa that is ultrasonic surgical aspirate that is an arachnoidal plane which has to be maintained throughout to prevent injury to the important neurovascular structures brain stem and vertebro bacillary arterial system now that's a tumor capsule now you can see now it has become significantly avascular because of the uh, because of the devascularization at the initial procedure now the capsule is opened and deep bulking is started now you see once we cut open the capsule we are not seeing much bleeding which was there in the beginning this is a very important step and which needs to be done tumor was quite firm and it was not coming into ultrasonic surgical aspirate and it was it was taking a lot of time so in such cases we use soft tissue debrider which is of great help which cuts and sucks the tissue without any problem now once that is done internal decompression is done gently tumor starts separating and as it starts separating we keep on coagulating the surface of the tumor remaining in the arachnoidal plane which is of great importance because it keeps reducing the blood supply to the tumor and tumor becomes more and more avascular and tumor starts getting shrunken in size and creates a space for us for the further dissection as is being done here this is the soft tissue debrider you can see how quickly and fast the the tumor gets decompressed now we are decompressing the core or inner part of the tumor once you decompress there will be arterial ooze again coagulate and again proceed this has to be very meticulous slow and under microscope with good illumination and magnification that is the superior pole of the tumor or the upper pole of the tumor that is being dissected again as you dissect the tumor as, as you decompress the tumor superior to inferior and medial to lateral slowly start extracting the capsule of the tumor from the undersurface of the cerebellum as we are doing now and and protect this protect the brain stem and cerebellum with small cottons so as to prevent thermal as well as mechanical injury to the brain stem and and branches and the main vessels of vertebro bacillar system now you can see there the internal internal decompression is being done and tumor is getting debulked or reducing in size as you keep doing that and to an arachnoidal plane remains uh, uh, starts to become very clear now you see a good arachnoidal plane is there and arachnoid is covering the medulla oblongata of inferiorly and pons superiorly and and the cranial nerves are within the arachnoidal plane now slowly the upper part of the tumor is again decompressed and one must remember at the upper part of the tumor we get facial and vestibulocochlear that is seventh and eighth nerve complex one must always keep looking for these branches and if you go a little more higher up we may get fifth that's trigeminal nerve and when you go deeper you may get sixth cranial nerve all these cranial nerves must be kept in mind and from the lower pole we will get hypoglossal ninth tenth 11th and 12th cranial nerves one must be very careful in observing them now you see a thick band of nerve that is a hypoglossal nerve is densely adherent to the capsule of the tumor now we try to preserve it and we will come to it later on when we do significant decompression of the tumor now again we go deeper now deeper part of the tumor from the from the from the margin of jugular fossa that is a jugular fossa and as i mentioned to you earlier it is the main source of blood of vascularity to the tumor now as you do that now you see the 7th and 8th cranial nerves are coming into vision now that is a 7th 8th complex now you see inside the arachnoidal plane you can see beautifully the 7th 8th complex now again with a sharp dissection arachnoid is separated and and tumor is separated from 7th and 8th 
cranial nerve complex. Now, keep coagulating on the tumor surface and within the arachnoidal plane and not on the surf on, on towards the brain stem and cerebellum. That is arachnoidal plane, arachnoid is cut. Now you can, we are seeing the complete 7th and 8th complex originating from the pons. That is the adhesion, arachnoidal adhesion, thickening of the arachnoid from the tumor to the cranial nerves is separated. Now the 7th and 8th complex is completely separated. Now you get some deeper important veins that is pontine veins or medullary veins on the surface of the tumor under any circumstances these veins should be protected because this is of utmost importance if you if you damage these veins patient may end up with venous infarcts of the brain stem and which may be a disaster to the patient now you see that completely tumor is being separated from the brain stem and you see the ponto medullary veins a big vein on the surface of the capsule which needs to be separated from the capsule under any circumstances and pushed towards the brain stem what we have been doing that is how gently the vein is separated from the capsule and and within the arachnoidal plane is pushed towards the brain stem and if there is a small bit of tumor on the on the vein you can leave it but never to coagulate or damage these ponto medullary veins it's of utmost importance now with the small cottons the now we are going deeper and deeper so the brain stem comes into the into the picture now so protect the brain stem with wet cottons because we are using a quite amount of coagulation by bipolar so thermal damage should be prevented under any circumstances to the brain stem. Now you see the whole tumor capsule is shrunk, the vein is dissected. Now only the tumor is adherent to the jugular foramen, opening of the jugular foramen, that is the deepest part needs to be excised. Now you see the hypoglossal nerve coming into picture and it is densely adherent and non-separable from the capsule of the tumor. So we go deeper and deeper and keep coagulating the, the capsule of the tumor which is entering into the intracranial cavity from the jugular foramen. That is the, the, the uh, excision of the tumor from the, the mouth or the opening of jugular foramen, coagulation and cut. Coagulate and cut, reduce the vascularity and you see now we have completely separated the tumor from the jugular foramen. All around tumor is taken out completely, only inferiorly there is, a, there is a thick hypoglossal nerve which is inseparably fused with the capsule of the tumor. We try to dissect the nerve but it was not possible it, and as it is she already had a loss of function of the hypoglossal nerve on that side. So along with the tumor capsule we excise the nerve close to the capsule of the tumor and you can see the thickened arachnoid is still there and that arachnoid is cut coagulated and cut all the veins are protected and that is the medial part of the arachnoid which is dissected which is going on to the brain stem now tumor is completely taken out from released from all the sides that's the medial most part of the tumor and that is also detached the arachnoid is cut don't pull the tumor at all under any circumstances because it may tear the vessel. Now whole tumor capsule is taken out. If you pull the tumor, it may rupture the vessels and veins and nerves medially which you cannot see. Now you see beautifully the arachnoid is well kept. Now we open the arachnoid and see inside if there is any tumor, tumor growth inside. Now you see the pons there and medulla oblongata, basilar artery, sixth nerve, 7th 8th complex and lower cranial nerves and the medulla oblongata. Now the part of the tumor which was going into the foramen, jugular foramen and jugular fossa needs to be excised as we are doing it now, completely removed the internal part of the tumor and it will be very vascular so we cover with surgical and coagulate it. Now this is the end of the surgery completely removed. After this the ENT surgeons take out the temporal part. Dura is reconstructed using the deep cervical fascia and bone is replaced and scalp muscles are closed and scalp is closed in two layers. Same day evening we get a CT scan brain done to see if there is any hemorrhage, edema, swelling 
or ventricular dilatation. Tumor is excised completely and there is no hemorrhage, no edema and no mass effect. This is a perfect scan. This is a clinical status of the patient on day 2. She has glossocoma score 15, no ventilation and she is in the same as preoperative status, not worsened and her no motor deficits and take, she is taking orally and breathing is absolutely normal and good eye movements. There is no lateral rectus palsy and she is taking orally also. You can see the neck incision for where we had done the external carotid artery ligation through the cervical cervical lateral part of the neck. This is the histopathology report confirming the diagnosis of glomus jugular. 10 days later she came for follow up and you can see she has pain in the osteoarthritis of the knee because of that she limps. This is her post operative status, wound healed well both cervical and the primary operative site, no deficits. She is eating well, she is attending to herself and walking and she wants to go to the job as the office superintendent in a school. Probably a week later she likes to join. That is the operative scar there, both primary as well as the cervical part where we ligated the external carotid artery. This is our neuroanesthesia team and that is our presence online with nearing about 385 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative procedures. Thank you very much for viewing.